Republicans in the Arizona House twice today blocking a potential vote to repeal that controversial Civil War era abortion ban that was upheld just yesterday by the Arizona Supreme Court. Some Republicans want it repealed, saying they'd like to go back to the 15 we week limit that was passed in 2022. Others say there's no immediate rush, given the law doesn't take effect for about 60 days. Instead of us all taking some time, letting this settle, having an honest debate when, when cooler heads can have this conversation, we're, 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 we're doing this. The shenanigans and the childish behavior we saw earlier. I think that with the Supreme Court's decision, I felt like there's the opportunity because we are here as public servants to serve the people. The legislature won't return until next week, so another effort to vote on this won't happen until at least then. In response to what happened today at the state legislature, Governor Katie Hobbs releasing a statement saying in part today's legislative action was unconscionable, adding my executive order protecting doc doctors and women is still in effect and I remain committed to an immediate repeal of this draconian ban. We're also hearing from you with more questions surrounding Tuesday's ruling on Arizona's abortion law, and we're here to get you some answers. And our own Ben Brown with our ABC 15 political team went straight to legal experts to get a response. A viewer named Ron emailed us asking what this new law means for people living on tribal lands. We asked legal experts to explain and answer several more of your questions. Even before Tuesday's decision to uphold the 1864 near total abortion ban, tribal lands already faced restricted abortion access. A lot of abortion care would have been provided by, very naturally, the Indian Health Service. And that organization, as a recipient of federal funds, was bound by something known as the Hyde Amendment, which said that if you receive federal funds, those funds cannot go towards abortion procedures. But in most cases, opening a private clinic is not a realistic option due to the expense to maintain it. And if there was one on reservation land, it comes down to who the doctor is. There's a good argument that if the doctor performing the procedure is an indigenous person themselves, then state and federal law has nothing to say about that. The state of Arizona especially probably couldn't prosecute. Another potential concern we work to address is what this new law could mean for miscarriages. It'll be really complicated because one of the medical procedures that is used in treatment of miscarriage is abortion. Is abortion. That's a miscarriage management procedure. Um, this law expressly bans it. And it only allows it to be performed in a very narrow circumstance where necessary to save the life of the of the pregnant individual. We also asked about the impact of this law for two other situations, contraception and IVF. Tuesday, Governor Hobbs said the Supreme Court's decision could be a precursor to banning both. For now, they remain legal. And while I'm glad IVF and contraception are still available to Arizonans, we know they are under attack. As for the abortion law itself, there's a chance it never actually gets implemented. I could anticipate that other court cases arise and that this um, this ban just kind of gets tied up in that litigation and potentially long enough to last until the November election. If the Arizona Abortion Access Act gets on the ballot in November, voters could decide a constitutional amendment to preserve abortion access. For the ABC 15 political team, I'm Ben Brown.